Slide on the pimp gang with my pinky ring Lot of gang, lot of bitches in the icy chain While you claim that you rich, that's a false claim I'll be straight to the whip, no baggage claim The Packers got off to a fast start against the Vikings on September 16, 1962 and never looked back. Packers running back Paul Horning was spectacular in the game as he scored 28 points alone. Horning had three rushing touchdowns, four extra points and two field goals in the contest. He also attempted a pass and was completed for 41 yards. Horning scored the team's first 20 points and the Packers won the game 34-7. Memorable Moments brought to you by the Oneida Casino. Nixon back deep. Here's the run-up of the kick from right to left to restart the game. And this one carrying into the end zone about four yards deep. Here comes Nixon to the five. Left hash marks 10, 15. Hits a hole hard. He's to the 25, 30. Breaks into the clear. Keyshawn Nixon is off to the races. It's Secretariat at the Belmont. Down the stretch they come. No one will catch him. It is a touchdown. My goodness. Came into the game, Wayne, questionable with a groin injury. Didn't practice all week, and he just took it right up the gut, through the heart of the Minnesota Viking coverage unit. The floor joins us now, and Matt, you did it, and you did it in style. You control your own destiny. What a game. Yeah, no, I was, uh, I was really proud of our guys. Obviously, it didn't start necessarily the way we wanted to, but... You know, our defense did a hell of a job just, you know, holding them to three points on that sudden change after the block punt. And um, then to watch Keyshawn kind of, he kind of got us going. I think that that brought a lot of energy, obviously, into the stadium and into our team. And uh, just, it was a great night all in all. One of the highlights, four takeaways, and each one led to a touchdown. That is complimentary football. Oh, no doubt about it. And obviously, uh, Sav with the pick six, that was awesome. I mean, scoring in every phase of the game. It doesn't get much better than that. But those were some timely takeaways that we had. And, you know, I was really proud of our offense to be able to go out there and capitalize off those. Great time to put Darnell Savage back in the starting lineup, huh? Yeah, no, he's, he's, uh, he's put two games back to back. I think he's played some really good ball. And uh, we need him to continue doing that, which I'm confident he will. Let's talk about the job you guys did on Justin Jefferson. He winds up with one catch for 15 yards. One catch, 15 yards, man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was uh, a, just a, a great defensive performance. What can I say? I thought we challenged him at, at times, and Jair uh, was very aggressive with him at, at times on the line of scrimmage. and. Um, played with great physicality. I thought all in all, our defense just, you could feel the physicality out there. Speaking of which, that T.J. Slayton getting more playing time with the injury to Dean. T.J. Slayton was a force out there. He sure, he, he sure was, and it wasn't just him. It was, it was really everybody. I mean, that was, that was a total team victory right there. Um, you know, being up 41-3 late in the fourth quarter and um, just really happy for our guys. And now we have a great opportunity in front of us, and we know we're going to have to play our best ball. we got a great team coming in here um, that, that beat us early in the year at their house. So um, it should be an exciting environment. 163 yards rushing by you guys tonight. Aaron Jones over 100. Were you pleased with your ground game? Yeah, I thought there was some, some good stuff. And, uh, 
you know, we'll, I'm sure we'll find some stuff to, to clean up and correct. And um, But, you know, I thought our coaches did an outstanding job putting together a great plan led by Adam Sinovich. Uh, it was cool. He got to call some plays there in, in, in the fourth quarter, too. And really all game long, I'm, I'm leaning on him with, with those run calls. And he does a great job. But it really is a great credit to our players going out there and being able to execute. And it's not just the offensive line. It, it's really everybody. It's our quarterback getting us in the right plays. It's our receivers, you know, blocking their tails off. Uh, tight ends, just being physical and, and really controlling that line of scrimmage. You know, the big dog. There's not too many guys. There's not too many teams that have a piece like that, and that that is a great luxury for us because it allows us to run, you know, towards him or away from him. And so, um, and I thought our backs were running hard. So, I, you know, all in all, it was, it was just a great performance. All in all, it's week 18, and you are an ascending football team, and that's a good place to be. It sure is, but we we know that you're only as good as your last game in, in, in this league, and. Um, there's going to be a lot on the line, obviously, next week. So winner, winner gets in the dance, and, um, you know, we need a great week of preparation. I feel like this is something that's been brewing the past few weeks, you finally getting into the end zone. Yeah. Uh, kind of happy it was here in Lambeau instead of Miami, so it's not that bad. What did you see on the return other than a gigantic alley? What did I see on the return? Yeah. The, the kicker. Uh, them guys had great blocks for me. Uh, they opened it up. I felt like the open sea, I just ran through it. And I knew I just had one person to beat. And then once I passed the kicker, it's party time. How much did you feel you, you sparked the team with, uh, with that play? Uh, I feel like I always spark the guys. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they pump me up before every turn. And then I always just got to reward them. I know they're going to block for me. They know I'm back there. So you got to reward my guys. Have you ever talked to Rich about why he hardly used you on kickoffs and, and with the Raiders? Sometimes it would be bigger than, you know what I'm saying, with coaches. It would be you never know what's going on with personnel, stuff like that. I just waited for my moment. It's my moment. You, you, did you go through a pregame workout, and how did you feel beforehand? Was, and was there any doubt that you'd play today? Uh, yeah, actually, like, we was, on Friday, we wrote us off. Like, yeah, if we can't run by Friday, it probably won't happen. And, uh. Text the coaches this morning, like, I feel like a Ferrari. He's like, huh? I said, I feel like a Ferrari. And came here, uh, just ran around. I'm like, ready to go. So I'm playing. Did you know the Washington result? Did you guys pay attention to that at all? And did it? No, it didn't matter. They lost, so you guys control your fate, essentially. I didn't know if you no, scored one watch or anything. No, I was locked in on this game. I think you'll be healthy enough to do nickel stuff next week, or do you still expect to be heavier use limited? Um, I feel I feel fine. I mean, I only had two plays today, so uh, still like a rest day, honestly. Um, so I don't know. Whatever they have a game plan, if, it, if it's me, you know, I'll be ready to go. So what did you what did you do between the end of Friday and this morning to feel like a Ferrari? Nothing, literally. I just lay down. I didn't run yesterday. Uh, they just rest me. And I'm like, if you can go on Sunday, you can go. Woke up this morning, texting South like a Ferrari, and I played in the game. That like a Ferrari running the ball? You all right? Sure. Yeah. Um, you get introduced as the kickoff returner, and the crowd cheers behind you, which I don't think I've ever heard here in my 16 years, like the kick returner getting cheered. What, what does that feel like being cheered in that moment before you get the ball? Yeah, it, it, it like really, that helps me too. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when I'm running with the ball, like, I don't really be knowing if like somebody behind me to tackle me, but I can hear at like the, stand, the fans when I'm running, so they kind of turn me up. And uh, I hear them, and that turns me up. So, Keyshawn, was it totally up to you to go today, at least on kickoff returns? Like, did they leave it up to you, or did you have to convince the medical staff to let you drive as a Ferrari? Um, they knew they weren't going to keep me out this game. You know saying? They just rest me. Word on the street is they had the best returner. So hopefully we settled that today. You were asked earlier about giving the team a spark. I mean, when you think about where the kickoff return comes, right? You guys get a punt blocked. The defense holds them to a field goal. I mean, could you feel that the game completely changed after you got to the end zone? Could you feel that on the sideline? Uh, I honestly, when I turned around and looked back, my whole teammates was in my face already. 
So I mean that that gives me, but man, it's the blockers. I it was like all I could do, all I got to do is run straight. I didn't, literally didn't have to do nothing but make the kicker miss. I just ran straight, and guys blocked their ass off. You know what I'm saying? Just gotta reward them. I mean, it looked like Dallin couldn't even find somebody to block when they showed the replay. Like it was. So I, I haven't even seen it. Yet. I just remember running. I don't really can't wait to see what it looked like. How did you guys keep it together? I mean, it's easy to say all the right things about you know we, we, we've got time. We just need to win one game, all that. But how did you guys keep it together when you guys are four and eight five weeks ago? We just needed confidence. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, had a lot, we had a lot of young guys on, on offense earlier in the year. Um, and at the end of the day, like with this football stuff, it, it don't matter if you 11 and, you know what I'm saying, if you 11 and four and you get in the playoffs, like if you in, you in. It don't matter your record. You got to play ball after that. Everybody's 0-0 zero, zero once you get in. So we, we hot at the right time. And it's time to play Detroit next week. LaFleur and Rodgers have talked very highly about you these past few weeks, and rightly so, um, especially with you kind of bringing that dog mentality to this team. How do you find that within yourself, and then how can you, how have you, or how can you help kind of spread that to others on this team? Man, uh, I was down actually all week. You know what I'm saying? I probably thought I wasn't going to play. I was down. I wasn't really talkative. And the guys always told me, man, just pray on it, and you'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? It was like, just see how I feel. If it's ready to go Sunday, we know you're going to play. We know it's like, you know what I'm saying, you want to play. So it's just praying about it and just resting. You know what I'm saying? I just needed a spark, and I was a spark for us. Mike Tiffy, our technical director. Here we go. First and goal. Dylan got the shove. Got the six. This is what you thought Green Bay was going to be, right, coming into this year, having – had two great seasons, just didn't quite finish in the end. But guess Taylor, as they continue to sit, Jones and Dylan, who put in good work all day. Rodgers on the run. Puck fake, frees him to the end zone for another Packer touchdown. Watch this. This is not going to be a. This is a hot. Oh! Should have stayed on your feet, right? Hurts against sideline today. Here's Cousins launching a long one, and he's intercepted. That's Rudy Ford. Ford with their fourth takeaway of the game. Eliminated anything happening early to give you that emotion and juice. And I know when you make it one on one, that ball had no chance as Ford comes down right. That was an easy pitch and catch only to the other team but I truly think last week Matt wanted to kind of be creative with touches with you just kind of preserve you but then all of a sudden here in the first quarter you're getting just about every touches so this is the time of year you got to go no matter what right hey, you got to go no matter what uh, game's on the line the season's on the line I'm ready I'm ready to go uh, whenever my number's called I'll be out there uh, no matter what's going on I'll, I'll be out there fighting with my guys Offensively, the running game and you in particular were major factors. I think 160 plus, you over 100 yards, major factors. Can you talk about that? Uh, definitely, you know, it's December football here in Lambeau. The, the, the weather gets a little bit colder, um, and I think that's we, we just get a little bit more physical and uh, it can lay on lay on guys up front. They open up holes, and uh, it's just a mentality that we have, and we know that um, through the run game, we can bring me and AJ and. PT and the rest of us backs, we can provide a spark. And uh, whether it's a big player just running somebody over, we could get the sideline amped up and get guys going. So just continue to look to be that spark and, and you know, bring everybody together. Aaron, what, what's it like? I mean, you guys have come back and it was just kind of an impossible dream. And now you win, you are in. What's it like to have done that? Oh, it's, it's amazing. We're not done yet, but uh, one more left. But um, just, I'm proud of everybody in this locker room. Resiliency, you know, we blocked out the outside noise when everybody ridden, wrote us off, uh, you know, everybody, uh, literally everybody except for these guys in this locker room, uh, the people upstairs. So um, just proving people wrong, that's, that's one of the best feelings. And uh, I mean, I, I don't feel like you could top that. <laughs> Can you contrast the feeling in the locker room like Thanksgiving weekend after the Bills drop a 40, today New Year's, new hope? 
Uh, I wouldn't say new hope. We are. We always had hope. We always believed in each other. We knew we would get it going. Um, we just. It was a little later than we expected, and we dug ourselves in a little hole, and we were planning to get out of it and make it to the dance. So uh, I would just say, yeah. <laughs> Talking about the guys counting you out, what would you say to them right now? Uh, they don't know how to count. <laughs> uh, it was just, yeah, never count us out. We have resilient guys in this locker room. You have a, a leader like 12, you're never out of it. You know, he's going to bring guys along, and uh, he helps me bring guys along as well. So um, we're just going to keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting. And uh, hopefully we're, you know, we get in the dance. So. What's it feel like when you get a special teams TD? Uh, defensive touchdown before you guys really even got it going on offense. I turned to the, I turned to AJ and I, I looked up at the, at the scoreboard. I'm like, damn, they, we haven't scored an offensive touchdown. They, they got we got 14 points, so that, you know that's nice. Um, just to be able to put up points uh, in other phases of the game. Um, you know, sometimes your offense may come out and struggle at, at the beginning or struggle all game. And if you're able to put points up on the board different ways, it, it, that'll definitely help you win games and. Um, so kudos to them. They helped us. It made a lot of things easier for us. AJ, your defense stopped the Vikings three times from the one-yard line. How demoralizing could that be? I mean, you would expect that they could score like from the one, but uh, when they don't, how? It's definitely demoralizing. You, you know, when any offense, when you get that close, you, you, you yourself, sorry, you yourself expect to score um, along with that, probably everybody else. So. Um, when you don't when you don't get that in, it's just a it's a confidence boost for the defense and everybody else. Um, you know, they kind of went to the sideline probably talking over like what went wrong here. We had four plays inside the the five or ten. You know, five, probably was inside the five, huh? It was the one. one. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, that's not that, that you won't see that happen too many times. So um, big shout out to our defense stepping up and they've been stepping up. What was your reaction to Mason's field goal bouncing in? I just, I, I, well, I was standing next to Ramiz, and I'm like, um, immediately I couldn't tell how long, it, how far it was. So I said, Ramiz, how, how far is it? She said, 56. So I saw this money in the bank. And then, so I'm like, and it hits off the crossbar, and I'm like, oh, that's going over, that's going over. And it goes over, and I'm just like, I, I was ready to run on the sideline, like, he kicked the game winning field goal. I run off the sideline, like, he kicked the game winning field goal. I just, uh, you know, Mason puts in so much hard work, and he's a true leader of this team as well. And just to see uh, God continue to have success and um, in a big moment, it just it, it brings everybody joy. Aaron, what gave you? The, I know we've talked about the venture locker, but what gave you the belief at four and eight five weeks ago that you had a stand, chance to be standing here um, tonight with a chance to win the, make, make the playoffs next week? Mm, I still believe in myself and felt like it just takes one sometimes. Uh, yeah, it's strange, but when we were sitting at three and six, and we looked at the next three, at the time Tennessee was playing really well. Obviously, Cowboys playing well, and Philly was number one in the league. And I just felt like if we get one of those, we can win the last five. And nine and eight was going to get in. Um, I don't didn't really go around saying that because you don't really want to say, hey, if we just get one of these next three. You know, <laughs> we can maybe make the playoffs, but. In my head, that's what I was thinking. Felt like we were going to beat the Bears. Rams at home, a uh, good matchup for us. Miami was a, was a wild card, I thought, and then the last two at home. That would be winnable, even though Minnesota's obviously had a really good season. Just dome teams in the winter and just the way we've played over the years. In December and January, our record's pretty damn good uh, with me starting. So now the things you don't count on, uh, Keyshawn Nixon. You know, didn't uh, know he was talented, but maybe didn't see Game breaker. Um, Christian Watson, you know, three and six. He wasn't a uh, big part of the offense. Uh, so that's what you don't account for, and you're happy when it happens. So along those lines, you're four and eight. You've got a rib injury. I mean, things looked pretty bleak. I mean, how much faith did you actually have? I mean, can you honestly say what your faith level was at that time? Hmm. I had faith, much like four and six, I think, in uh, 16. Um, sometimes you got to fool yourself a little bit into believing a little bit more. But I had, I definitely had faith. I was going to go down uh, scrapping, for sure. Um, but 
I do believe in the power of uh, manifestation, and uh, I do believe in momentum. I believe of the. I believe strongly in the force of the mind. And when you start to believe something strongly, that some miraculous things can happen. So when? All right. So after you lose the Philly, before you beat the Bears, we're at your locker, and I asked you about the wooden pyramid, and you said. Even if maybe you don't wholeheartedly believe it in that specific moment, you can't ever let them know that. You always have to lean on that hope that things are going to get better. Did you not wholeheartedly believe at that point? And did something, was it Christian, was it Keyshawn, that made your faith a little bit stronger or a little more confidence to manifest it? I think all that did, for sure. Um, and in the end, the love of the game. You know, that's why we play this game for uh, incredible runs and moments and special things coming together. When, when it's all said and done, uh, it's the moments and it's the way you made people feel that I think last. And when you can spark a little bit of hope, it's pretty special to be a part of that momentum. And you know, regardless of what happens last week, the fact that we came back from four and eight and put ourselves in a position to make the playoffs is pretty special. Now I believe that a lot has happened in our favor. That's pretty obvious. Um, every game that needed to go our way just about went our way, including uh, shout out to AVP and the Browns today, you know, with a big win in Washington. I was definitely watching it uh, in the back uh, equipment room. Uh, cheering along the Browns, also following the Colts Giants as well, which that one kind of went south pretty quick. But uh, and then obviously checking in on the Saints Eagles because, you know, when all things come together, didn't know how the Washington Cleveland was going to finish out. But now obviously Dallas has a lot to play for in the, in the last week. Uh, the only team that really doesn't, I guess, would be the Giants, you know, who are in and kind of locked in at the six, I believe. So. Be interesting to see how it all shakes out, but I know not many people in that locker room, and definitely not many of you people, uh, believe we'd be sitting here at eight and eight with control of our own destiny, going into week eighteen. Pretty yeah. special. I'm sorry. Do style points matter? And I ask it because I look way back in 2010. You guys are kind of puttering along a little bit, then you beat the crap out of the Giants here in the second to the last game. You stuck in the playoffs, and obviously the rest of it happened. So does beating the crap out of the Vikings today, does that matter any more than just beating the Vikings however? It depends on if we play them down the line. Uh, I think it all, it all matters. Obviously, there's some scenarios in play. we got to win next week, and then our fate is tied to Niners and uh, Cardinals, I believe, and uh, Vikings are playing the Bears. But, uh, but yeah, I think it all matters for sure. You know, we could see that team again. Obviously, wouldn't see them here in the cold, but um, it doesn't matter confidence wise. Uh, most of those lo the losses that they've had have been by, you know, obviously more than a score because they haven't lost in uh, one score games. But uh, it gives us a lot of confidence. This is probably the first game all season we played complimentary football in all three phases. Um, or the way our defense played, forcing turnovers. Offensively, you know, not a huge game stat-wise, but uh, we did a good job of holding on to the football and ran the ball pretty effectively. And then, you know, Keyshawn, what can you say? And Kabi, you know, Kabi had a double-digit return in the first quarter. Keyshawn, you know, was incredible. Obviously, we had a punt blocked, but uh, we're becoming a more dangerous team. And, I, you know, we've all seen some of the uh, commentary outside as we went from four and eight to five and eight to six and eight, and nobody's worried about the Packers and blah, 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 blah. Uh, now what are you going to say? Is this the team you thought you could be? I mean, this defense and maybe that complimentary special teams and doing what you guys need to do on offense, is this what you hoped it could be at some point? Listen, we all love Rich, and, and he's been a, uh, as big a part of this as anybody, I think, just his leadership and the way he's uh, gotten those guys playing. Um, I think he deserves some credit for pushing to get certain guys on the squad. 
like our captain this week, Dallin, and like Keyshawn Nixon. Um, so kudos to the personnel staff for bringing those guys in. But uh, shout out to Rich for doing that. We all thought our special teams were going to be better. Um, but not, maybe, you know, just hasn't been dangerous, I don't think, in a long time. But now we, we have more dangerous teams, which is pretty special. And then uh, the defense, you know, I think this is the way they expected to play for much of the season. Hasn't been the way that they've played the entire time. But when you're playing ball in December and January, the most important thing when you're talking playoffs, and for a long time I'd be standing up here and we're already in and we're just playing for seeding, and you're talking about playing the right way and resting last week and not playing, momentum, blah, blah, blah. Um, you want to be playing the right way and you want to be healthy. And if you look at our squad outside of Rashawn Gary, you know, we're pretty healthy and we're playing the right way. Are there things you can do to keep the momentum going this week or is it basically just inertia? That's a good word on the bingo card, Pete. I think there is a lot of inertia, but you got to restart. You know, it starts all over. Uh, come Sunday, if they put a Sunday night, that'd be pretty special. Uh, we've played in a couple of those Sunday night games, I feel like, against the Lions over the years, uh, definitely in 16 and maybe even in uh, 12, possibly. I feel like that was a night, a later game. We were playing for seeding. Might not have been the Sunday night game, but might have been 325. But but it's not the same old Lions, you know. They've been, they've, uh, they were one and six at one point, and they've come all the way back to eight and eight. And there'll be a lot on the line for both teams. Uh, it'll be exciting to uh, to line up against them. Is there one thing to go over the last few weeks? You know, you're not in control of your own destiny, not as much pressure. But then to come in this game knowing that you do have control of your own destiny in the way you guys went out and played. What does that say about the maturity and growth of this team? That even when the pressure was on. They play, you play your best football probably this season. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of credit goes to the staff on both sides and, and obviously on the teams uh, for making sure we stayed in the moment and, and had our guys ready. But it comes down to players. Players win games, and guys went out and, and played really well. You know, for us to have a blocked punt backed up on the one-yard line and, and just get three, that was a huge, huge stop for us. And then what happened? Then Key runs it back for a touchdown, it's seven three. Then we have pick six. Next thing you know, it's fourteen and three. We've done absolutely nothing on offense, and we're up by two scores. A little different feeling, uh, for sure. So I uh, haven't really had that over the years. Tom reminded me it's been a long time since that's happened uh, uh, around here. So uh, definitely credit goes to Matt and Joe and Rich for getting those guys uh, ready to play. I'm not sure if everybody knew what the scenario was. I definitely told the offense uh, as we brought it up that. Uh, you know, win two and we're in. Um, I think we played uh, pretty solid on offense, and obviously the other two phases played excellent. Aaron, what, what were your thoughts when you saw the Vikings take over, first of all, the one after the block one, and the defense holding the field on that series? What were you thinking? I felt like we were going to win the game the whole time, so nothing really changed. Even if it was 7 nothing there, I felt like, you know, this was our day, and uh, Things have been happening for us the last few weeks exactly as we need them to happen. And that's the mindset that I've had uh, the entire time, that, uh, that there's some uh, destiny involved with this. And, and it's just on us to go out and fulfill that. Two more. I was talking to David at his Bakhtiari at his locker, and he talked about facing adversity. And you've talked a lot about getting one and then having the confidence roll forward. How do those two kind of play together? Well, I think one of the most important things in this game is, is dealing with adversity. And it's going to hit at certain times, stretches. We obviously had a really rough stretch. We were 3-1, and one, playing some pretty good football. Went to London, lost the game. That turned into a bunch more. And backs were against the wall a few different times. And guys stepped up and played really good football. And that's, that's where the character was formed. You know, a lot of times the character is formed during training camp and you see kind of how the team's going to be and we're going to be this on offense and this on defense and this on teams. And uh, it took a long, long time. Bill's always asking me about, you know, the, you know, what the identity of the team is, I feel like. And, and, you know, there were times like, I don't know. You know, it's like <laughs> we're trying to figure it out as we go. But, uh, but I feel like 
a lot of guys that we maybe didn't expect or expected to and didn't in the beginning uh, have stepped up and taken hold of their roles and, and played some really, really good football. You know, look at the guys that made plays today. Sav had a pick six. He was benched for a number of games. Zach Tom played his fourth different position for us. Right tackle. You know, he played left tackle, left guard, right guard. We were joking, you know, was, you know in the locker room. The only thing left is to play center for us at some point. Uh, didn't expect him to play a big role for us. Christian Watson, after nine games, you're thinking, well, you know, maybe next year he'll kind of step into his own. And, and he's been a big part of what we're doing, even if he only catches, you know, a couple passes, just the, the threat that he puts on the defense. Alan Lazard and his consistency, Aaron Jones and his consistency, A.J. Dillon and his consistency, David Bakhtiari coming back after a myriad of injuries, you know, and being just so consistent at left tackle. Um, this is the identity that we thought we were going to have. It just took a long, long time to get there. Aaron, how's it just feel for you personally when there were questions about, hey, if this goes the other way, how would you feel about Jordan playing? I mean, just especially considering the uncertainty of what comes next whenever this run ends. How does this just feel for you personally? It was really special. It does. It's uh, been an interesting year. It hasn't been my best football at times, but uh, I've been asked to step up my leadership, I think, and be someone that guys can count on to keep it together. You know, even when it doesn't seem like there's anything to play for, we, ain't, we don't have a chance to make a run. Um, there's been a lot of special moments throughout the year. And it didn't look great for a while. And I was resigned to some of those realities being possible. And when I took my mind there, uh, I had a piece about it. I had a piece about all of it. Whatever was supposed to happen, I was surrendered to that reality with also the resolute mindset that we could still get back in this thing. And I think that's what I'm most proud of uh, for myself and our team is that there were a lot of different things that could happen. And we stuck together. And we put ourselves in position to do something special. I know exactly how to defend him. Well, he's in the slot against a D lineman. Give it to him. Ball's knocked out of his hands and recovered by Green Bay. Kenny Clark did it all. He got to the quarterback, popped the ball out of his hands. Fifty-six to close out the half. Gives it his best. Is it enough? Hits the crossbar and goes through. Right out of the Justin Tucker playbook. Unbelievable. The yeah. New Year to there. Look at this. I mean, everything going the Packers' way. It's Every a, bounce. Hit a three-pointer, hit it off the front. Fourth quarter comeback wins most all-time. Four wins after trailing by 10 points in the fourth quarter. That's crazy. So they're not out of it, but... Second and 11. Rodgers backs up to buy time. To the end zone! Touchdown! Robert Tunyon! Go ahead. Here's Tunyon. But I want you to watch the pocket of Rodgers. I'm going to pause it here. Right there. He's now reset the pocket, and there he is, way up top. And at that point, looking left. You look like a wrestling move, no question. Ooh, you're burping on my guess? Yeah, I guess is what it is. First and ten. Oh, that ball may have been tipped. It was, and Amos has it. He's out of bounds at the 40. Shift. Jefferson to a slot to the right side. There's the pass down the middle, and it's broken up and intercepted. Off the deflection, it's picked off. Savage got blockers in front. Only Cousins is down there. He won't get him. And the Packers have a second return in the opening quarter for a touchdown. What a kickoff. What a pick. Unbelievable. What a job by Douglas. Up to multiple times, and right here, he gets right in there and punches that ball out. And then Savage, and this is where we go. 
Oski, Oski, or something like that. Every time the defense would do that. And that's where everyone gets into their blocking technique. Yeah, form. Pre Preston. On both sides so far, nine plays, only 12 yards total to both teams combined. No first downs. This is Nixon, who's dangerous. Oh, here he goes. My goodness. He's taken at the distance. You talked about how dangerous he is. The most kick return yards in the NFL. And he shows it right there. He had a 94 yard kick return last week. And here he is again. Wow. Return last week with a groin injury, so he's a little bit yeah, questionable he, this he, week. He looked very slow, and he doesn't look like he yeah. had enough juice, right? Oh. Look at Joseph try to make oh. an attempt. He just stiff armed him like, get off of me. He's Sean Nixon. Coach Matt LaFleur joins us now, and Matt, you did it, and you did it in style. You control your own destiny. What a game. Yeah, no, I was, uh, I was really proud of our guys. Obviously, it didn't start necessarily the way we wanted to, but, you know, our defense did a hell of a job just, you know, holding them to three points on that sudden change after the block punt, and um, then to watch Keyshawn kind of, he kind of got us going. I think that that brought a lot of energy, obviously, into the stadium and into our team. And uh, just it was a great night all in all. One of the highlights, four takeaways, and each one led to a touchdown. That is complimentary football. Oh, no doubt about it. And obviously, uh, Sab with the pick six, that was awesome. I mean, scoring in every phase of the game. It doesn't get much better than that. but. Those were some timely takeaways that we had, and you know I was really proud of our offense to be able to go out there and capitalize off those. Great time to put Darnell Savage back in the starting lineup, huh? Yeah, no, he's he's uh, he's put two games back to back. I think he's played some really good ball, and uh, we need him to continue doing that, which I'm confident he will. Let's talk about the job you guys did on Justin Jefferson. He winds up with one catch for 15 yards. One catch, 15 yards, man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that was uh, a, just a, a great defensive performance. What can I say? I thought we challenged him at, at times, and Jair uh, was very aggressive with him at, at times on the line of scrimmage and um, played with great physicality. I thought all in all, our defense just, you could feel the physicality out there. Speaking of which, that T.J. Slayton getting more playing time with the injury to Dean T.J. Slayton was a force out there. He sure, he, he sure was, and it wasn't just him. It was, it was really everybody. I mean, that was a, that was a total team victory right there. Um, you know, being up 41-3 late in the fourth quarter, and um, just really happy for our guys. And now we have a great opportunity in front of us, and we know we're going to have to play our best ball. We got a great team coming in here um, that that beat us early in the year at their house. So um, it should be an exciting environment. 163 yards rushing by you guys tonight. Aaron Jones over 100. Were you pleased with your ground game? Yeah, I thought there was some, some good stuff. And, uh, you know, we'll, I'm sure we'll find some stuff to, to clean up and correct. And um, But, you know, I thought our coaches did an outstanding job putting together a great plan led by Adam Sinovich. Uh, it was cool. He got to call some plays there in, in, in the fourth quarter, too. And, Really, all game long, I'm, I'm leaning on him with, with those run calls, and he does a great job. But it really is a great credit to our players going out there and being able to execute. And it's not just the offensive line. It, it's really everybody. It's our quarterback getting us in the right plays. It's our receivers you know, blocking their tails off. Uh, the tight ends just being physical and, and really controlling that line of scrimmage. You know, the big dog. There's not too many guys. There's not too many teams that have a piece like that, and that that is a great luxury for us because it allows us to run, you know, towards him or away from him. And so, um, and I thought our backs were running hard. So, I, you know, all in all, it was, it was just a great performance. All in all, it's week 18 and you are an ascending football team and that's a good place to be. It sure is. But we, we know that you're only as good as your last game in, in, in this league. And um, there's going to be a lot on the line, obviously, next week. So winner, winner gets in the dance, and, um, you know, we need a great week of preparation. How much did you want that matchup with 18 today? Uh, just as bad as I wanted it uh, week one. Which is saying a lot. Yeah. How did it come about? Uh, you know, 
the I mean the coaches had a good game plan coming into this game. Uh, <clears throat> they knew what would put us in the best position to win, and uh, that happened today. Did you talk to Jefferson at all after the game? Uh, no, nah, I mean, I don't think he wanted to talk to me. <laughs> you talked to him plenty during the game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I talked to him plenty during the game. How so long did you have the gritty planned? Uh, shoot, all week. You practiced I it? had it all week. I didn't practice it, but I knew when I got out there, I was just going to do it. Yeah. How'd it look? Uh, he looked pretty mad about it. What was he saying to you as you were doing the gritty? I don't know. It don't matter. It don't really matter what he said. After what you said earlier this week, what do you think you and, and the secondary proved today? Shoot, man, we the best in the league. You know, it's about longevity. Uh, <clears throat> it's a game of chess. You know, and uh, you know those guys getting interceptions. That was phenomenal. You, Jay, after Thursday, did any the coaches or anybody say, "Hey, man, I wish you wouldn't have said that." <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who, who said something? Oh, shoot, I mean, everybody, you know? But uh, that's just the confidence I have in myself and, you know, the people around me. So, hey, it is what it is. What would you tell them about why you said it? What I tell them? Yeah. Uh, shoot, I just told them, like, just be honest, you know? That's it. So, just to clarify, what were you calling a fluke from week one? From week one? Oh, yeah, just all the yards he had. That's what I was calling a fluke. Because, you know, he was catching passes with nobody even on him. Like, yeah, okay, good job. You knew so, if that, so if that was a fluke, what is one catch for 15 yards? Man, greatness. Until Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless, they need to, you know, watch what they say when they talk about me. You feel me? That's what, They need to watch what they put out, talking about he a good corner, great corner. So, yeah, send that to them. You knew when you said that comment that you'd be matching him today, right? Yeah. So kind of self-motivation there to kind of, you knew he was going to hear that, you knew that you were going to be covering him, kind of get yourself going? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, anytime you got the best on the best, like, shoot, you, who wouldn't want to wake up to to that, you know? Like, I thought about that all week, you know? Was, I've, I've been ready. How uh, did week one feel, and how does today feel? Uh, shoot, man, week one too far to think about, but today, man, it feels spectacular. It, sp it feels phenomenal. It feels... Super califragilistic, <laughs> escaladocious. You didn't really have to block him on Amos's interception return. You just kind of wanted to do that. Oh yeah, I, yeah. That was, you know, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. The first incompletion. What tone did that set on their sideline? Shoot, <clears throat> hey man. You know, a lot of times you see him doing the gritty. It was my turn, so you know, I wonder what they thought. What was going on on the sideline after the last interception, where he ended up over on the sideline? Ah, uh, shoot, I can't remember. You were saying something. I was though. saying something, but I can't remember. It was just one of them things. Like I just, just in the moment, you know, like, just lose it. Rasul said on Friday you guys were having a conversation, and you looked at him and you said, "I got this." What made you say that to him? Uh, like I said, I've been ready all week for this matchup. I've been ready since the first week, you know. So, like, that's I, you know, when you prepare, it's like you over prepare. It's like, all right, man, I'm just ready to play, you know. Because it's just in, in, in because his passer rating in the first quarter was four point nine. Mm -hmm. What kind of tone did you guys feel like you set in the secondary with your coverage just coming out of the game? Like yeah, man. I mean, shoot. Like I said, man, the secondary all year, we always say, like, we the best. You know, we the best in the league. It's about longevity in this league. So you can start off high, but some people tell off in the end. But, it's like, we just keep rising. And uh, <clears throat> we playing complimentary football because the front is going crazy right now, too, creating hella turnovers. When, when you gain a mental advantage against someone like that, how do you feel their frustrations grow? How do you capitalize on that as a defender? Oh, no, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. It ain't really about him at that point. I already knew what I was going to do coming into the game. And, yeah, so I did that. Jair, they won the North. You still need another win to make the playoffs. But based on the way you're ascending right now and the performance you put up today, whose shoes would you rather be in with the way your team's trending? Man, I'm taking I'm taking go, Pat, go all day, man. Yeah, Waddle last week, you had the gritty today. You had, you had a rush up on, on St. Brown the next week. What do you got for them? Oh, I don't even know. I'm going to have to wait and see what he's doing. Which which did you like more, the Waddle or the gritty? I like the gritty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the gritty. Yeah, At what point what did you learn about? that the Commanders lost today? Oh, I didn't. Yeah. I only watched TV, so. Jared, what does it say about this team a couple of weeks ago under a 5% chance of making the playoffs? One win now and you're in. Well, I mean, it goes back to, you know, the speech I gave after our last loss, you know, and I I, I didn't say it, but I'll say it, you know, it was basically like, you know, these next few weeks will mean something. We'll see who it means, you know, something to. Oh, uh, wait.
Wait, I said that wrong. <laughs> Hold on, wait. Uh, what, what I said was, <laughs> what I said was, uh, uh, we're going to see who really cares, you know, after our last loss. And, you know, I mean, everybody's been picking it up, you know, and, and it's been showing. So that's pretty much it, man. Is this the defense you pictured in training camp? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're missing a few of our dogs, but, you know, still, man, we're playing good football and we're playing together. That's all that matters. I know you said that two more week one is too long to think about, but you also said you wanted 18 as much as you wanted in week one. Have you not gotten the opportunity? How does that make this sweeter to be able to get the opportunity to today? Oh, yeah, most definitely. <clears throat> I think uh, interception would have topped it off, you know. I would have just, but, you know, somebody knocked it down. I know I can't be too mad at them, but. Yeah, no, nah, this is perfect. Like, this is this is everything. Like, everything is ascending. Yeah, ascending. What has changed from week one to tonight? What has changed? What has changed from week one to tonight? Uh, shoot, man, we flying around. What's the mindset now going into a win and you make the playoffs game next week? Shoot. I mean, it's playoff football. That's it. It's playoff football from here on out, and it's been that way for weeks. And, you know, it shouldn't change. It, Sometimes it's just depending, but I knew like I was just probably going. I don't know. I get into a mode, and it's just like, all right, you know, it is what it is. You just gonna have to deal with it. How dangerous is this team right now? Shoot, we we red hot, but we can be hotter. So we just got to keep going. Some kinky shit, man, she keep calling and calling Man, that bitch is a stalker First I want my ass slick, then I need my toes slick Soon as a bitch thinks she's done, I come up with some more shit I can't have a square bitch, now I need a rat bitch No gag reflex, no ring, no marriage I'm super, yeah, I'm super messy Me, I need a super pro, go super low And give a nigga some super fellatio And if I'm soft, it's her fault It's her job to get me hard My dick's the bishop, to help a bitch find God Church Keep it raining on my hoes And tell the shit on my back everywhere I go That paper keep it flowing in This shit go again Look bitch, you're working my last nerves I have to go to therapy I can no longer fuck with you But you and I had was a flesh shorty I had enough for you I'ma stop putting my thing up in ya Bitch, if you don't stop calling me Every hour on the hour Motherfucker, can't you tell you're more than me I'm smoking, drinking Twister. When you looking at the body, you gon' wanna get it with her. Because
Cause the bitch is a banger Big swag, a socialite Easily clicking with strangers Never really know when you get to meet her Cause she was so thick and you think she the bomb first yeah. That's what she do She said she do promo for concerts uh, uh, But she don't wanna listen Gotta be at every party I'm at Running around VIP like a rat Why you all on a motherfucker like that? Damn. All these flaws make a nigga pause with the words Word. Got the draws but now I'm feeling like fucking with you for the birds For the urge Got myself in some shit I can't get out so shoot me Now the bitch all on the internet stalking me That's what I get for fucking with the groupies All I can do is smoke a loose uh-huh. Sipping trip on how the shit go, but all I know Better be the business if you end up fucking with her Cause she could be a hoe right. Nah, let me put it in retrospect Reminiscing, wish I could go back up in time And intercept your sex Reaving. Now what you all in the window with my two dough foe Little mama, you get on my nerves I bet you I ain't fucking you I'ma no more Damn. I'ma stop putting my thing up in your bitch If you don't stop calling me I'm the middle man Walk, talk it like a boss I just lift a hand Three million cash Call me Rain Man Money like a shower That's my rain dance And we all in